Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And in this video, we want to see what we can do to improve thermals on this Xilinx C1100 FPGA. You can see the heat sink is just very, very small. It's only eight millimeters thick and we're having to severely downclock and limit its efficiency and potential just to keep it running on the stock cooler. We have a 120 mil on the front and a 120 mil blowing air out the back and that's just not going to cut it. So we got a different cooler and let me show you what we got. This is the Osprey Electronics C1100 cooler. I don't think there's a particular part number or anything like that, but I will leave a link down in the description if you want to check it out. This is specifically for, I think, the C1100 and U55, but don't quote me on that. Check out the link. It will tell you the models that this particular heat sink is made for. It comes with five copper heat pipes. Obviously, nice fin stack to keep it nice and cool, and I heard this runs or keeps the FPJ really cold. It's got a copper heat plate, so don't use liquid metal or anything like that, but it does get the job done. Only eight screws to really mount the FPGA to this heat sink. Then to power the dual fans, we got a six pin, which if connected will run the fans at 100%, or two four pin PWM connections to manage it through your EUEFI or whatever your favorite fan controller is. The back plate is a replacement for what's stock. I'm not sure if you need to use this one or if you could just continue using a stock one, but this one does have foam to prevent any SMDs or short circuiting, as well as some thermal pads on respective areas. Then you're gonna wind up swapping from a single slot to a dual slot, so make sure you got the room in your system or overall rig. And of course, the hardware. Now these screws gotta be screwed into a specific area, but this video is not about the installation. I'm gonna have a separate video on that. If you wanna check that out, check it out in the link in the description. Um, I'm just going to be focusing on the thermal. So I'm going to put this on and then we're going to go compare the original thermals at the current clocks to the new thermals at the same clocks. And then as well, how far can we push this particular FPGA within reason, obviously, because you don't want to shred or, uh, you know, overvolt a expensive FPGA. So let's get this installed and get started. All right, so here it is, hashing away. Fans are running at 100% speed because we are connected via the six pin, um, but it is staying super cool. So we're gonna switch over to the main system and I'm gonna show you a couple screenshots uh, with the old settings on the stock cooler versus the new, um, and then show you what I was able to push this thing to as far as clocks and thermals. So before I get into thermals, I wanna show you something real quick. The limitations are on these FPGAs, and I just want to make sure you're aware of them. Right now, what you're seeing is an error because I tried to go below 600 millivolts on the core, which is represented by VCC INT. I will do a tuning FPGA video later, but I just wanted to show you that I tried to go below 600 millivolts to 588, and it stopped me because the safety limits are protecting this device. It also will protect it thermally as well. To bypass these limitations, TRED Miner has the command line dash dash fpga underscore allow underscore uh unsafe and then you have to put your dna number again i will show you that in a future video but i wouldn't recommend doing that the thermal limits that it might bump into is first let's take a look at caspa in under four minutes i was able to hit nine degrees celsius in the core and that was just at a core clock of 300 megahertz so it's really kind of uh a little bit below uh, much more what it's capable of, right? And we were only getting about 2.385 giga hash at 125 watts. But in under four minutes, we hit that core limitation. And then when playing around with Ethereum, the MEM limitations or the max for the MEM is 80 degrees Celsius. And you can see we hit that in under three minutes. So if you leave these FPJs stock and you're trying to push it on the stock cooler, you're going to run into thermal issues or limitations and honestly, you don't want to be doing that. So that's why I downclocked it. And actually, what I settled down on was around either 260 to 300 megahertz, depending on how cool it was with the stock cooler. But you could see at 300 megahertz, I was hitting 78 degrees Celsius with the stock cooler pulling around 67 watts. Whereas I tuned it up a little bit more, trying to make it more efficient, dropping in the core down to 200. Uh, megahertz we were sitting more around 60 maybe the high of 62 but we were able to hit 
the 80 degree range with the stock cooler even when underclocking right at the stock voltage of 600 even with underclocking and everything we were bumping into those limitations so let me show you what we were able to drop this down to after so tuned up a bit we pushed we left the core kind of the same around 260 and you remember what that was before it could be 60 62 65 um, if we go up towards 300, we're hitting 78, 80, almost 82 degrees on a hot day. Whereas now with the Osprey cooler on 260 uh, megahertz core, we're only sitting, we're, we're below 40 degrees Celsius. So this thing's keeping really cool. And because I'm running the six pin, I'm running 100% fan speed, no problems whatsoever. This core stays nice and cool, even when I'm pushing it, which I will show you uh, later on. But this is all Casper right now. Uh, as far as Ethereum, goes i played around with it a little bit uh but it's not as profitable so i'm just going to focus on caspa and the data for it so again pushing the core a little bit more we're up to 592 on the core um i even dropped down the the core voltage down a little bit but you can see our error rate which we'll all be talking about in the next video about tuning the fpga i already have that data online and reddit if you follow me there but you can see that the core is just sitting at 51 or 50, 51 degrees, which is honestly pretty good. The max stable that I was able to get, sort of, right? Because you see the error rate's really low, 0.14 versus 4, um, was 597, basically almost 598 core. Uh, the VCC as low as I possibly could, could go, but this isn't going to be 24-7 stable. However, I was right there at 4.8 gigahertz, and I actually showed a short, if you haven't checked it out, where I was able to hit 4.8 gigahertz um, around this uh, power draw, and still the core will not go above 52 degrees Celsius. So this Osprey cooler is keeping this thing extra cool. It's going to bounce around the printing during the evening when it's nice and cool here in Florida, maybe around 46, 45 degrees Celsius, all the way to when I'm pushing it around 51, 52 degrees Celsius. And you can see in Hive, and by the way, these red errors that you're getting, you know that the accepted and, and rejected um, error ratio, don't don't pay attention to that. I already talked to Todd, uh, the Team Red Miner uh, dev, and what it is is Hive is not talking to the GPU. It's, it's counting, uh, it, it's not able to determine or understand the data correctly, and so it's counting as a rejected share, but I don't have any rejected shares. Uh, what's more important is the error rate that you saw before, but I'll go over that again in another video regarding tuning this GPU or, excuse me, FPGA. Uh, but you can see 48 degrees Celsius right now at time of filming. It's hot, peak, peak heat of the day in Florida, and we are sitting at 4.63 gigahash. So this thing does really well. If we scroll on down on the pool that I'm mining, I'm averaging with this one FPGA around $4.50 uh in us dollar or 124 caspa uh monthly that's uh, 134 135 bucks or uh 3700 caspa a month and you can see that i am getting hit with the 15 percent dev fee right so i'm i am doing 4.6 something uh at the minor but at the pool i'm more like 4.1 unfortunately and that's where the 15 percent dev fee comes into effect and obviously is going to reduce your hash rate if we look at hash rate dot no they have it a little bit more efficient uh, where it's at 4.2 uh, giga hash um, and it's sitting around 110 watts. So I'm, I'm definitely 30 watts higher than what they're saying for their settings here. But if you ever wanted to try it out, you just click it and here you go. It says set the core clock at 500, core voltage at 575, which you would need to use that, that unsafe command. Uh, the memory controller, which again, VRAM, it's lowest is 700. Uh, the VCC MEM, the lowest is 1050 uh, that you could possibly go to if you want to save as much power as possible. And then they got a high overclock of 534 or 580. I was able to go beyond this and below this, and you will see all of that and the efficiency in a chart that I put on Reddit, which will be linked down in the description. But come back for the next video where I talk about the actual data and what I found in my tuning and what the important things to look out for with mining with this particular fpga but long story short this cooler does a great job keeping it cool yes there is another one where it's a blower style uh design that blows air through it or you could get a blower style like laptop cooler and then 3d print uh a little bit of a a, a sheaf or a, 
a funnel that goes into the back side of the GPU to blow it out, the, blow air through it and out the front. And that will keep it cool. But the Osprey cooler does a really good job. The only impact that I'm going to have, maybe not you as a miner, if that's all you're going to use this FPGA for, is that when I do want to do any development with Volado or Batiste or any of those programs that allow you to develop and play around with FPGAs and Bitstream stuff like that, is the stock cooler uh had all those specialized thermal pads in various spots to cool certain boards or certain chips on the board whereas right now all it's getting is a uh, bypass of air right so there isn't direct contact of the cold plate onto those components all it is is having airflow go over which should be fine again for mining but when it comes to pushing these chips or these fpgas a little bit harder in the workloads that they were really intended for not just crypto mining I may bump into a bit of an issue, but that's a problem for me to figure out in the future. However, that's going to do it for today's video. So do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date. As well as check out some of the links in the description. That helps support the channel and what we do here. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. I'll catch you next one.